tannin and acidity are two essential components of wine that really make up the structure. When you think of the overall structure of the wine, you have the body, the weight, how it feels on the mouth. You have acidity. It acts like a spine. It's kind of like the main frame. And then the tans to me are the frame. They kind of hold the wine together in the palate. When you add all those components together, that's what gives the wine the overall mouthfeel, the overall structure and length. Acidity is something that's definitely quantifiable. You can measure wine by total acidity, tartaric acid. Most wines have between four and nine grams per liter of total acidity. Then you have pH, which is the potential acidity. That's what winemakers use a lot, but that's really, really hardcore geeky stuff. Acidity is that sourness, that freshness that you get in beverages and fruits. Acidity is really what makes our mouth water. I think as you get into wine more and more and more, you really start to crave acidity. I know where that's where I am. I really love wines, both white and red, that bring a lot of acidity, a lot of juiciness to the table. When I talk about acidity carrying length being the backbone of structure of wine, I always compare it to drinking juices. If you've ever had fresh squeezed orange juice, and if you taste it next to an orange juice that you buy at the supermarket, the fresh squeezed orange juice, that brightness, that acidity, it's so fresh, and it just goes right down the palate, kind of tingles the mouth a little bit. Where the store-bought orange juice, it kind of feels a little bit flabby. Fantastic wines with good acidity are kind of like that fresh squeezed juice. They have that arrow that just shoots straight down the throat. Tannins are a naturally occurring substance in plants. You see them in tree bark and different kind of fruits, seeds, skins. In nature, when it comes to fruit tannin, usually the tannins are harsh and astringent before the fruit is ready to eat. That's nature's way of letting the seed mature inside the fruit. Once the fruit, the tannins are ripe, the animals will eat it, then they will poop out the seed, then the tree or the plant will propagate. In wine, it acts as a preservative. It is structure in the mouth, but it is also structure in the bottle. Tannins are what help great red wines age for a long time. A lot of foods were actually prized for tannins. Tea, chocolate, and coffee. And why it's really hard to quantify exactly tannins, more of a textural feel. You can have underripe tannins that can feel a little bit green and then ripe tannins that can feel real plush. I always compare it to a banana. For instance, I personally like my bananas a little bit on the green side. Those tannins are a little bit green, a little bit chalky in the palate. However, you have people that like tannins that are pretty ripe. If you ever taste them, those tannins are kind of plush. In red wines, tannins can come from the seeds, the skins, or the stems or oak barrels if the winemaker chooses to use them. Too much tannin with not enough acidity, the wine can be pretty difficult to drink. If you've ever had a pessimum before that is not completely ripe, it is just so tannic, there's no acidity, it just makes your mouth go it gives that drying feeling in the mouth. However, tannins are not what make a wine dry. A dry wine actually means when sugars and grape juice, all of them ferment into alcohol. A lot of people make that mistake. They say the tannins that are astringent, they say that's really drying. And yes, your mouth does feel a little bit dry, but that's just really tannin quality and astringency. A lot of Italian red wine grapes are unique because they have high acidity and high tannin. Some of the most common include Sangiovese and Nebbiolo. I don't have those two grape varieties here. However, I have two grape varieties here that are very well known for their high acidity and high level of tannin. The tannins in Italian red wine grapes are different. They just, a lot of people describe them as espresso-like tannins. If you're ever in Italy and you have the espresso, you go to the espresso bar, have coffee, you feel that slight mocha, slight bitterness. It's really hard to explain unless you have been there and have had espresso or you're an Italian wine aficionado. Okay, let's blind taste these two wines. And as I reveal, I'll talk about the grape a little bit. We'll compare the tannin acid structure. This is gonna be an interesting tasting. You ready? I'm ready. Let's get it. And we're back, tasting out of my Rove Seal wine glasses. These are the best inexpensive wine glasses I've ever used. A lot of people have bought them. Check them out in the link in the description below. It helps the channel if you purchase with that link. So thank you. Different kind of tasting here, because usually when I'm doing these face-offs, or usually when I'm blind tasting in general, I'm paying attention to the totality of everything. The flavors, the way the body is, the acidity, the tannin, the length especially. But here, I'm really gonna focus on the acidity and tannin. Of course, I will talk about the flavors. I can't help it, we're blind tasting, but let's take a look here. Let's start with wine number one. Wine one has a lot of pine type notes, black blackberry, black raspberry, but not Bordeaux black fruits. You know, it's those fruits that are, that can be red fruit, but kind of just darker. Like I said, black raspberry, mulberry. The pine really comes out here a lot. It's a little bit floral. It's, it's kind of popping right out of the glass. Really good. These are two tannic grapes, but I have to say, 
The tannins here are really under control. They're ripe. They kind of massage the palate. It has the cedar type of note that I associate with some great Sangioveses. So to me, this is quintessential Italian. I have to say that this is impeccably balanced. Tannins, do they grip? But they're not overly astringent. They don't rip your gums off. The acidity and the juiciness and the fruit just keeps everything kind of suave, kind of massages your palate. Acidity actually brings the perception of body down. Tannins, if wines are more tannic, they bring the perception of body. They make the wine feel a little bit bigger. Acidity also lowers the perception of alcohol. One example I think about the tannins bringing up the body is you think of something like a Barolo Barbaresco Nebbiolo at the front. It feels more medium body but the tannins start to build up so the wine starts to feel a little bit bigger. This is an excellent wine. Let's move on here to wine number two. This is out, this is outstanding. Wine number two. Wine two has more blueberry mocha, a little bit of red raspberry, a little bit darker than a little more blue fruits here. And the tannins here are a little bit bigger. They're a little bit more astringent. They kind of suck the saliva off, but also the acidity is a little bit higher here. The wine's pretty juicy. This is a massive wine. It needs the steak. Why tannins and steak go so well together is tannin takes the saliva off your palate. So in essence, it cleans your palate. So when you put the steak in your mouth, you get more flavor because the saliva is kind of come off. The tannins start to metabolize and break down the meat as well. That's why meat and big wines go together, cabs or wines like this. This is a big boy wine. Let's go. Let's let me read compare again. My perception has changed a little bit. This is starting to feel a little bit more acidic than this wine is. Actually, never mind. Maybe it's because the tans are, so it's really, hard. when I judge in competitions, you're tasting 50 to 100 wines a day. You start to get tired because you're really sitting there having to think about it. It's a lot different than just sitting down enjoying the wine. Wine geeks like us get a little bit crazy. I think sometimes you should probably just sit and enjoy the wine. You don't have to know a lot about wine to enjoy it. But these are wines that definitely make you think. I think a lot of people that are drinking Zins, big California Cabernets are gonna like this style of wine. I think I know what this is. The tannins were big, it's really mouth drying. This definitely needs steak. Both wines are incredibly structured. This might be a wine that ages a little bit longer. I actually think this wine is ready to go now. I'm really enjoying it. Let's take a look right here and see what this is, shall we? So I thought this is the Montione Montefalco Sagrantino 2019. 15.5% alcohol. I give this 92 points. Sagrantino, a grape from Umbria, the center of Italy, right under Tuscany. Umbria is the greenest area in Italy. The only region in Italy that isn't bordered by another country or the sea. Sagrantino is a wine that's extremely tannic. High in acidity, really needs to be laid down for a long time to enjoy it. Those tannins are just absolutely massive. Both these grapes are tannic, but this one just, the, the tannins were a little bit higher. This is a wine to me that's not ready to drink right now. Sagrantino is usually need seven to 10 years at least. Sometimes people say 20 to 30. Massive wine. This right here, 94 points. I thought it was impeccably balanced. Just the red fruit flavors and that cedar note just started to get to me. I thought it was an outstanding wine. High acid grape variety. This is the Tenuta Cavalier Pepe Opera Mia Torasi 2015. Has some age on it. Made from the grape Alianico. This is a grape from Campania, the south of Italy, grown in volcanic soils. Alianico sometimes got the moniker as the Barolo of the south. The most famous appellations are Torasi, also Alianico del Voltore in Basilicata in the deep south of Italy. I have to say for a long time, I never got that comparison until I tasted a great aged Tarassi. And I was like, wow, I smelled it. I was like, this does smell like Barolo. I think this is outstanding. Alianico grape that's high in tannin, high in acid. There's a little more color than Nebbiolo. This is what happens when the tannins, the city are just completely in balance. And also it's a little bit older, 2015 compared to 2019. That's what happens with a little bit of bottle age. Both these wines coming in at similar price points, 44 bucks. Like I said, this is more of a steakhouse one. I think this is good this is ready to go ready to drink so tell me what do you guys think about tannin and acidity what do you prefer do you prefer more tannic muscular wines like the sagrantino you prefer a little more acidity more balanced wines like this upper amia i'd love to hear it in the comments below i'll see you soon